This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Why is it, though, that when they, they have the fantastic beliefs and such, and, and they're just so drawn into it as if this is fact, this is going to happen, and then it doesn't happen? Why do they keep going down those paths? I mean, to, to everybody yeah. else, you think, this must prove it that they're wrong. Maybe they'll they'll wise up or they'll change their thoughts. But a lot of times it's like double down even more. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that little element of if we were, you know, doing a full battery of psych testings, this person would test out as poor reality testing. You mm -hmm. know, they just don't seem to have this ability to naturally look at the evidence and be objective and come to a conclusion that, okay, obviously this didn't work. It's not true. Maybe I need to examine my whole belief system here. I was raised in a, a Pentecostal church as a little kid, and I figured out by 14, 15, 16. This crap doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen evidence of that and I fortunately flushed all of it. Yeah. But there are people who just don't seem to make that developmental progression. It's one thing when one does it for themselves uh, like that, where you, you you reach that point, you're like, okay, this just doesn't make any sense. Um, but it's another, if if you're around somebody like that and, and you're just watching it happen over and over and, you know, in, in some of these cases, you know, when someone gets sucked into a cult like this, they may have already, you know, had a, you know, a, a fa fairly normal life, maybe, you know, kind of conspiracy ish, but not all the way down the rabbit hole like some of this. Is there any pulling people out of things like this? Uh, I mean, if, if there had been a, a loving critic for Chad Daybell or Lori Vallow at some point in their life that was like, you know, I, I love you, but we got to we got to kind of take a hold of this because some of this is going to get dangerous if it's not stopped. Are there paths for helping people get out of things like this? You know, you can't just like point out the obvious and say, you're wrong. This is insane. That does not work. But are there are there directions that that one can go? And, and have you ever gone that way, you know, with a client or anything like that to help them try and see reality? It is so hard for folks who really have this problem with reality testing and, and can't progress to an adult, normal adult level of analysis in their thinking. It is so hard. I think you you hit it with lovingly question them, yeah. um, present the discrepancies. Well, you know, you did say X, Y, and Z, but none of that happened. How do you make sense of that? You can certainly try those things, but I can't say that it's very often successful. And if they do let go of one bizarre belief, they just seem to latch on to another bizarre belief. And with my relative I have tried all of the above, including just coming out and saying, that's bullshit, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. And then he just quits talking to me. <laughs> so, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, that, that's got to be so troubling for people who are in that sort of a situation with, with people that they, they care about. And, yes. you know, especially like a spouse or a child or something of that yeah. nature um, to try and, and, and pull them out of it. Is it one of those things where, uh, you know, you, sometimes with a personality disorder or sometimes a mental illness, um, just trying to get to the point of, of, of understanding it in some way when you can't fully grasp it, of just going, they're not capable. Is yeah. that really just kind of the answer to that? Is some people, this is just how they're wired. They are yeah. not capable of seeing this any other way, no matter how it's presented. Yeah, I think that's the place ultimately that most family members get to. This in my family, this person's children are adults and they just roll their eyes at him and avoid talking to him, unfortunately. You know, and everybody just knows if he shows up at the holidays, he's gonna be weird and spout all this weird shit. And the the most we can do is go in the other room, not listen to it, and you know, cross our fingers he leaves early because it's there's just no getting through. Is it infectious? I mean, I, I feel like we we see more more of it today than we have in the past. And maybe that's just because we, yeah, everyone has a platform. Everyone has a way to communicate their insanity to the rest of the world. Maybe this has always been going on to a certain extent, but, but you know, is this an infectious thing? I mean, it, it can be pretty darn dangerous. I mean, we see it in the world of politics and stuff, and I'm not going to go down the road of yeah. politics, but, but sometimes just fact versus fiction and, and yeah. people have a very hard time deciphering the two. Uh, is yeah. this something where, where someone who otherwise is a healthy mind can kind of get sucked into this without even knowing it? 
I think to a certain degree, we've definitely seen that with a lot of the QAnon stuff and people, mm -hmm. you know, these really bizarre claims and people who seem to be fairly normal would latch on to it just because they were seeing so much of it online. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that there's a viral process, you know, we talk about things going viral and, and with these weird beliefs, there's an element of that too. And the more people see it spread online all over the place, the more they start to think it's legitimate. Now, those are people that I think when you present them with facts, they can usually get some perspective and go, okay, maybe this, maybe, maybe Alex Jones here is a bit <laughs> off with the aliens and all of that. Yeah. But, um, but again, it's on a continuum and some people are more prone to fantasy than others. And it's, it's difficult for many of them. The fact that people can create community around this and they don't have to be just in their own backyard. It doesn't have to be people that are just going to the same, you know, weird backwoods church or something that are yeah. all together. They can, they can find community anywhere has that increased this kind of bizarre thinking that people have in society today where they can't quite grasp reality or facts or truth because there's so many other people who are feeling the same way and they just get it reinforced in, in ways yeah. that in the past they didn't? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's definitely true. And we see that manifest in so many different ways, even with, you know, the, the mass shooters, the school shooters and people like that. They actually form communities online where they gamify shootings and they talk about, you know, the other killers that they're fascinated with and that they admire and they sort of build this cult around them. And then every so often one wants to go out and prove himself that he can get a higher body count than the yeah. other ones. And and it really these are people if they didn't have that community they would never even be thinking that way. Yeah, it's like the community makes it far more dangerous. Yes, very much so. Oh, fascinating. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.